Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the study this morning. Um, we're going to continue in Judges chapter 9, so let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have here this morning uh, to open your word together. We're thankful for uh, each person who is involved in understanding these truths, who's studying them online, for participating live. We just ask for your angels' care and protection and that you can give, give each of us a clear and understanding heart and mind as we tackle these um, these verses and we try to apply them to our present situation. We ask for your Holy Spirit to um, speak to us now as we, we examine these verses and we pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Now, um, what particular point did, do we remember we were discussing yesterday, right at the end when we stopped? Does anybody remember? Dwight, do you remember? I'm trying to recall it right now. Yeah, so we were, um, we were obviously dealing with uh, this parable of Jotham and particularly addressing um, the bramble. Right, so, so, but I can't remember exactly what the final point was. Uh, that we had. Um, I can look it up really quickly here. So you're almost in basically a, th uh, a thought. Yeah, so we're dealing with um, uh, beer, right? So the well, that was part of what we were talking about. So we we're actually addressing um, Jotham, where he where he goes. If you remember that now. So so that's verse twenty one. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to beer and dwelt there for fear of Bimelech of Abimelech, his brother. So we are taking this as a reference to um, what message? What, what, what's going back to beer? It's, yeah, we're approaching it as what was going back to the seven times. Right, so it's going back to the seven times. What is beer? The, the word beer, it's a place. It means well. So we're connecting it to, um, it's not the well of the oath, but it's in that area, right? So um, this is a well that was made by, um, was it made by Jacob or Abraham? Abraham, I believe. Okay. Right. So, so we're connecting it to that, the study of the seven times. And so when, when we look at this here, when we, 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 we've taken these verses, so one is we recognize that um, um, was it nine? Yeah, let me see here. Um, okay, so I'm just reading back here. So in, in his, after he finishes his parable, he's going to give his conclusion, right? And, and then in verse 18, he says, You are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, threescore and ten persons, upon one stone, and have made Abimelech, the son of his maidservant, king over the men of Shechem, because he is your brother. Now, one thing we should note here is he doesn't say 69 persons. He, he, 
he still says 70, even though he's the 70th. And, and we touched on this before, but why does, why does he do this? Why wouldn't he say, why wouldn't the Bible say that 69 sons were killed? Why does it always say 70? They were trying to kill him, so he's, this, this is that he's counting himself as if he already had been killed. Okay. Um, well, I would think, I mean, that's probably partly true. But here, um, this is just the way that Hebrew would express it. So even though there's only 69 of the 70 sons are killed, he have slayed his sons, three score and 10 persons. So his sons are 70. And upon one stone, we said that that was referring to, to Christ, that that's representing the, um, the cross, the cornerstone. Right? This is about the 70 weeks. Now, they could have put, I guess, in, you know, 70 persons are his sons, but 69 were killed. But they don't, they don't say that. So I think as the symbol, I mean, they could have done that, I guess. But, but this is the way that they would write it in Hebrew. They, they wouldn't be like we are where we would try to narrow it down to the 69. They're just going to talk about the number of sons is three scorn and ten persons. These sons were slain upon one stone, even though technically one got away, right, which is Jotham. So he's included in that number of the 70 sons, which is my point. But he is the one week. Right? He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So if we go back to this idea that we've been talking about here, that this is about the covenant, right? Because this is, he's going to speak from Gerizim, where um, we know that there's a covenant made, a true covenant, and there's also a false covenant, a counterfeit covenant, correct? Right. So so this theme of the covenant is there. From the location, from where Jotham gives his prophecy. And, and so now he's going to go back to the well, which we're going to connect to the seven times. And we know that the 70 weeks is connected to the seven times. That what happens in the book of Daniel, especially as far as the time prophecies are concerned, that they're connected to Leviticus 26. They're, they're not just something that are introduced all of a sudden in the book of, of Daniel, right? Because Daniel in chapter 9, he's going to refer back to Leviticus 26, to the oath written in the law of Moses. And, and we're going to see that the 70 years that he's talking about there that he's going to study are based upon Leviticus 26. So, so here we have this message of Abimelech, and now we're going to have this, um, the message of Jotham. So we're saying that the message of Abimelech is this message regarding um, the Trump prediction and the Sunday law. That it's, it's, I mean, he is a, a son of Gideon, that is, he has that inheritance of July 18th, because Gideon is the message of July 18th, but there is a leg illegitimacy here. And, and then, of course, the character of Abimelech in, in that this message is going to undermine the understanding of prophecy, right, which is the 70 weeks and the, and the, and the seven times. So, what we were trying to discuss, what we were trying to do was place where this message is given and when Jotham runs away. And, and so where would we place that this message, this parable of Jotham is given? Where would we put it time-wise in our time? No. So we know that they're going to, it's going to be when they're gathered together, making uh, 
um, Abimelech king, right? Agreed. That that this is going to occur. That he's going to get up on. Um, so, so there's, I'm just trying to find exactly. Um, in verse six, and all the men of Shechem gathered together, and all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gerizim. So it appears that he's doing this when they're anointing him king. Right? This isn't some time later on. Is, is that correct? Or are we wrong about that? Is there anything in the spirit of prophecy that would? Yeah. September f or August 4th, 1881, Signs of the Times, paragraphs 13 and 14. Right. So that's going to tell us clearly that this is going to happen. <coughs> so that mo moment. We have, we have Abimelech with his uh, unprincipled men that were ready for any crime that had slaughtered Gideon's family. Yeah. He then returns in triumph to Shechem. And upon his immediate return to Shechem, he is anointed as king. Okay. So then Jotham is informed of this after the fact. So when Jotham was informed of it, he immediately comes to Shechem. And he stands upon Mount Gerizim in a position where he could be seen and heard by all the people. Right. So there's a multitude were engaged in festivities in honor of their king. So he's already anointed. So they're just celebrating. Right. But they, the, those festivities are celebrating the occasion with hilarious mirth and sensual gratification. Yeah. So. Okay. The lines that we're looking at with all of these stories. Yeah. Is we're looking at, at all of this in Judges as being from 2001 through to 2023. Yeah. Are these lines to be running concurrent with each other? Um. No. The, the, the reason I'm asking the question, it almost seems as if these examples are given with a repeat and enlarge. Okay. Well, we haven't done that. I mean, we know we have some that are repeating and enlarging, but they're focused on different aspects of the line, right? right. So, the way, so the way that we looked at it is we zoomed into a way mark, and that way mark when it, you create a line, doesn't just include the events that happened on that way mark, but it includes events that occur earlier. Right? I would agree. So, so when we, for instance, looked at um, chapter six, seven, and eight, we could see that six and seven pretty much cover the same period, but six, eight covers some of that period, but extends a bit further. And um, because that one's the December 25th, 2021 way mark that we're zoomed into. And so we notice this in the story of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we could take uh, a line for Abraham, and there would be way marks on it that if we took a line for Isaac, those same way marks would be there, but they would serve a different purpose, right? And then we did the same with Jacob, and then the same with Joseph. So, so there is a type of repeat and enlarge, but it's not just a completely parallel. So you asked the question for what reason particularly? Well, if we step back just a little bit. Yeah. After the meeting in Germany, mm -hmm. where Parminder and Tess began to exercise their papal power, Mm -hmm. we have a situation where they 
came out very soon after this and told people that they were not to listen to Elder Jeff because, quote, he was dead. Mm -hmm. Does that point have any way mark with what we're dealing with in this story? Yeah. So, so we already addressed that, that the death of Gideon would parallel the death of Jeff. Now, in that case, though, we have a false death of Jeff, that Jeff isn't dead, right? You understand what I'm saying? No, I, I get what you're saying. And so, so I mean, there is some ways in which, um, I mean, this history that we have here, I mean, they are repeating some of the same errors as as Parminder's group had. Right. That is one is it's a party spirit. And I don't mean by party like celebration type party, but it's uh, though that was is a characteristic that I would put with both groups. I, I don't think that the. The type of conversations that go on, um, I don't think are really appropriate. And and um, and one is we could we could parallel this back with what Ellen White says about what happened in 1888. That same sort of um, mocking spirit occurs. Now, in Parmenter's group, we could obviously add sensual gratification, whether that's the case here. I don't know, but um, in, you know, if we parallel it with our history, the way we're doing, but I don't think we can just take this and, and just jump it back that this anointing of, of Abimelech, because the message of Abimelech is an inheritance um, that comes from the July 18th, because it's descendant of Gideon and Gideon is July 18th message. So, but it's mixed with this pagan or, or uh, Baal worship, right? And, and right. that's the inheritance from Parminder. So it has these two inheritances. That is, it's uh, the message of Abimelech is illegitimate in that sense, right? So it inherits both elements from Parminder and it uh, has elements from J July 18th but it's actually undermining the July 18th message. And, and then we could place this, um, right, we're going we're gonna to be placing this at December 25th, right, because that's where Colin's going to do this presentation about Trump. And... Um, but then we're going to have Jotham, and Jotham is going to follow right after. So the message of Jotham is the understanding of the lines, which is going to happen on December 26th. So it's still in connection with that. Um, so December 26th, uh, immediate, and we also have what Stephen presented on December 25th. So Stephen presented... Um, that there was 777 years from 457 BC to 321 AD. So we could take the 70 weeks now and the 777, which 777 days ended on December 25th, 2021, which we had marked as the Sunday law, as a symbol. And if we take 777 years at the start of the 70 weeks, it brings us to the Sunday law in 321 on March 7th. So, so we have these two parallel messages, so to speak. The message of Jotham, which is then going to be the studying of this history of understanding the lines, um, which is what these um, trees, the parable of the trees represents. And specifically understanding the lines in relationship to this message. So it does go back and cover um, our history, right? And we, we said that 
it's actually going to cover the period of the judges. I think we concluded that. I think it was pretty much agreed upon that the parable is covering the period of the judges in symbol and that we can line that up with our history so that we can go back to 2001, just as we have been doing with the book of judges and, and start there. Now, I mean, if you need me to draw this on the board, I can do that, but I don't know if we're quite ready yet. But we can see here that Ellen White is, is saying that this is while the festivities are going on. And so it's, it's after the actual anointing itself, but it's still part of that celebration that Jotham ascends on Mount Gerizim and gives this parable. <clears throat> is that making sense? I think it's giving a good a, a good baseline. Yeah. So, but yeah, I understand what you're saying about, you know, Parminder, but you can see that they've inherited that. Right, because we're what we're trying to do is we're trying also to determine <clears throat> what portions or what item of Parminder's message has still infected the current movement. Mm -hmm. So we're having to examine every point to take a look to see what is there that has been accepted by those that have remained in the movement and remain studying that should be abandoned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely there's, well, one is the whole spirit of criticism. I agree. Attacking the man. Nothing wrong with looking at what somebody's teaching and discussing it, and even saying that what they're saying is, is wrong and here's why. But if you start attacking the person's character, his personal life, um, um, misrepresenting him to others, mocking, you know, those types of things, they have no place in, in how Christians deal with differences. Right. And so we have elements clear counsel on that. And um, and so when you see people sort of laugh and exalt, oh, this person's wrong or that person's wrong, and and they have that type of spirit, we know that that's a satanic spirit. It's not something that comes from Christ. And so it's something we have to uh, recognize if it occurs in ourselves. Um, so... So when Jotham runs away and flees to Beer, to the well, uh, he does this for fear of Abimelech, his brother. Now, you know, we would need to understand this as a message, right? So this message of Jotham is going to dig into the word in understanding the lines, right? That's what, what's going to occur. Now, we're also going to address, if we look at this, at, at what we have done in our study, we start the study of the lines on December 26th, and, and we begin uh, also on Friday night studies uh, to start looking at um, the, um, the presidents of the United States. We start looking at call-in studies. We also know that um, we're going to have uh, Odilio studies dealing with uh, the pandemic that are going to come along as well. And, and both of these contain these elements that we would agree are correct. That is, the chronology is correct. The problem is the interpretation. But this message of Jotham, by fleeing to beer, by studying the seven times, um, and when it says for the fear of Abimelech, so this is a message. Um, how would we characterize that? How would we, how would we take this description, and how would we apply it to what has happened? What does the fear of Abimelech, his brother, mean as a symbol at the present time?
Would this mean that the message of Jotham gives it's given a message, but it's not going to go into some direct uh, conflict? That because what we're going to see in the downfall of Abimelech is that this downfall occurs internally in that message. The message of Jotham seems to be an appeal to the heart more than anything else. Okay. Yeah, because when we look at the downfall of Abimelech, right, it's going to be three years. Now, of course, we know three years can be mean parts of three years. And if we went from December 25th, 2021 to January 11th, 2023, we can characterize that as three years. Biblically, yes. Right. Okay. Um, so we, we've been saying for a long time that at the end of that period that, that we're going to see this return back to the correct method of study. So if this message of Abimelech um, with the men of Shechem, right? So we haven't really defined who the men of Shechem are, what they symbolize, but um, other than that, this is a covenant. This is a false covenant with the men of Shechem. Um, but we could see that there would be a dissatisfaction with um, this message. And how that's going to bear out, how that's going to happen within this movement, how we're going to be led to the upper room, I don't know. But I do know that that's where we have to go. And that would be that the message itself of the Trump prediction, instead of, instead of fighting against that message in a, you know, in a strong way, like Jotham gives his, his message, he goes to study. But he is not going to attack this message directly. He's not going to have some army come and go against his brother, his illegitimate brother, right? And so we can say that that's what this move, that's what we've been doing in how we study, that we're going to beer. And we're allowing that message of Trump and and the immediate Sunday law in 2022 to fail. And that the cruelty of the, of the attack against the chronology, the correct understanding of the message of Gideon, right? That, that that blood is going to be laid upon this false message, the message of Trump and the pandemic. So that message is going to end on its own. Does that make sense? Well, it is similar to David not killing Saul. I mean... The one thing that that is uh, that we see in David's character, which is Christ-like, is the the ability to believe that God in God's promises, and to trust that God's going to take care of things rather than taking things into His own hands. There's lots of things in David's character that are faulty, but when I said when the Bible says that he, um. I can't remember the words they use for his his character. What's what's well? How is it characterized again? Abimelech's character. David's character. No. Oh. A man after God's heart. Yeah, a man after God's own heart, right? And and I think that's the characteristic of David that is God after man's own heart, or a uh, man after God's own heart. Pardon me. <laughs> oh, backwards. Um, is that David trusts in the promises of God. He doesn't try to, to work and manipulate the situation when it comes to the kingship. He knows that he was anointed by God, and he allows that to happen in its time. Right? Right. So, I mean, to me, that's an important aspect of 
of understanding that truth has its time. And then when we try to force the situation, like Abraham did in, in fulfilling God's promises, that it, it just creates in greater difficulty and disappointment, right? So, for instance, with, with July 18th, when it was rejected by the movement back in 2018, it was taken up again by the movement on its own without any interference on my part. That is, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't writing Jeff and telling him that he needs to believe July 18th and he needs to promote this or anything. Jeff chose that him, himself to do that. <clears throat> um, so, so we need to trust that God's message is going to, to win in the end. And so we've used these lines, what God has shown us, to know that one is the Trump prediction would fail. But also, its failure will bring us together in the end. It'll be the end of that message of Abimelech. And then we have this opportunity to go to the upper room, right, which is 2023. And now, we, we can take verses and use them to refer to dates, right? So, I mean, we, have, we know December 25th, 2021 is December 25th. Um, 2021 is 920. That is, it's the 20th day of the ninth month. So we, do we see any significance in Judges 920? Now, this, in a sense, is, if you want to call it something, the curse, right? If not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, or Milo, and let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. This would be uh, basically a curse, right? I would agree. Okay. Now, Jotham's upon Mount Gerizim, which is the Mount of Blessing. But he's going to basically utter a parable that ends with a curse. So we can see the blessings and the curses tied together here. Right. So if December 25th is the 20th day of the ninth month, then December 26th is the 21st day of the ninth month. Right, which I'm saying that that marks when these studies began on understanding the lines. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to Beer. So that's what happens on December 26th. And he dwells there for fear of the bill like his brother. So he's not going to openly attack this message. He's going to be there on December 25th. Right, that message is going to be there. But it's going to be that instead of dealing with a conflict, that that message of Jotham is going to be the studying of the lines in connection with all these this chronology. And then at the end of three years, after he reigns three years over Israel, Abimelech does, then we have this evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. So the message of Abimelech is going to be rejected. And then this will be corrected, this rejection of the chronology and the time prophecies and the way that they are understood correctly, those will be corrected incorrectly. So they were incorrect, they're now going to be corrected. Okay, does, does that make sense to people? No, we're, we're going to have to deal with all the stuff that happens in this fall of Abimelech, what this means. But I would say the fall of Abimelech itself is a, a line, right? So we, we've had this uh, 
Abimelech becoming king and the message of Jotham. And then we have to address the downfall of Abimelech. Any, any thoughts on that? I'm having, I'm, I'm looking at this in, in the way that you're presenting it. And in the middle, as you were speaking, my internet connection became very unstable. So there's quite a bit that I missed. Okay. But a lot of, a lot of what you're going over would be <clears throat> interesting when we finally do place this onto a line. Yeah. Now you did pick up on the judges 920 and 921 being December 25th and 26th. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, twentieth day of the ninth month and twenty-first day of the ninth month. Yeah. And then we have these three years, which brings us from twenty twenty-one to twenty twenty-three. Okay. So, from the comment in the chat, do we apply the three years of Abimelech's despotism to the three days given to? The, the men of Judah to gather at Jerusalem and repent and divorce their strange wives? Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Because we already marked the three days as, as addressing that. But this is the call to Jerusalem. Right? So then we have at the end of these three days, then we begin the divorcement, and that's going to be begin on the end of J January 11th, 2023, going to, um, well, that's going to be the 88 months, right? Or the 88 days, which is 88 months, which is 2,640 days. So, yeah, the three years is the three days, because we already gave the three days as that. Is that understood? I'm just, I'm just mentally going over it. So yeah, I, I, I can see the point. Yeah. I mean, there's also, I mean, there's other ways in which we looked at it, depending which line we're on, but we, we can see that the, uh, the three days are tied to December 25th, 2021, and the three years are tied to it. Sort of, we, we I guess in some ways we put the three days prior to December 25th, 2021, and the three years after, but they're still tied to the same way, Mark. And the three days, you know, because it's the call, but, but in some ways we need to put the three days after, you know, so because the 20th day of the ninth month has three days before it, right, in 457. But we're not marking particularly, um, you know, three days as a period of time there. It's just a symbol attached to December 25th. But here now we can take the three years and we couldn't, can mark it as a period of time. Okay. Now, in some ways, we also could have taken the three days and marked them as the three dates, November 9th, 2019, July 18, 2020, and December 25th, 2021, which is sort of way I marked it initially, something to do with that. But, but it's just a symbol. But here we have this symbol three years that we could take as three days, and we can place from 2021 to 2023, no matter where you start that in 2021, whether you're going to start it on December 25th or some other date. But, but I, I think it should be quite clear, you know, how we're doing this, right? We're, we're still taking this method message, the parable of the trees, as referring to what we're doing now in the understanding of the lines. And the understanding of the lines, if our studies get, are, go uninterrupted, that is, if we don't take a break, 
January 11th, 2023 will be num study number 264. Right. And then from that date, there will be 2,640 days to April 5th, 2030. And so we know the message of Jotham points to that date because it's the week of Christ, which points to the first day of the first month in 2030, which is April 5th. And, and we have other things that we've already tied um, to that date, going back to military history, going back to our history, uh, dealing with 9-11, also brings us to April 5th, 2030. So the message of Jotham, which was... Um, understood um, in connection with this uh, is basically as I don't know what word to use an antidote maybe to um, Colin's prediction but once I looked at Colin's prediction I could see that it connected to the chronology of it connected to um, the date that I already had April 5th, 2030. So we, we, we need to realize that this, this can't be chance. Like there are some things about these lines that if we were to just take them as stories, we could subjectively fit them into different places. But when we have something as profound as chronology, that's very solid, I, I don't think we can dismiss that. So we would say at the end of the three years, in 2023, whether that's actually on January 11th or 12th that this happens, we know that this message that we characterize as the Abimelech message, which is the message of Colin and Odilio, that that message is going to be rejected. Because it will have failed. It will have failed to fulfill its promises. Right. Okay. Now, in that curse there, that this fire coming out of the message of Abimelech and devouring the men of Shechem, we haven't really defined what the men of Shechem are. Now, we, we sort of have, um, in an earlier story, because where did we have Shechem before in the story of Judges? So, so where do, where do we have Shechem? I mean, we got it back. I mean, we go back to the covenants. So, who are the men of Shechem then? Because we have this false covenant. I'm just trying to find it where. Um, so we got. Is it just in Joshua? Are you are you in Joshua? Joshua that? verse seven. Yeah, that's which which chapter? Twenty verse seven. Okay. Right. So this is the story. So this this has to do with um, well, this is the city cities um, of A refuge. refuge. Okay. And so then we, you've got you've got Joshua twenty four one, where Joshua gathers the tribes together. Right. So, so yeah, so we're going to have this covenant renewal at Shechem. So we have, if we go back to Shechem is going to be the original thing is it's going to be called Sikkim, right? Right. In uh, Genesis 12, 6. Right. But it's going to be called Shechem later on. In Genesis 33, 18. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, this is always going to be about this covenant, right? Okay. Genesis 12. Um, yeah, because that's going to be Abraham or Abram at the time. 
and in 12.6, so that's the 12.60. And then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Go to thy seed while I give this land. Right? So that's really the first time he calls him um, is in Genesis 12.7. Right? Though he doesn't really say much about it. Right? I mean, that's really where, if, if you want to say that the covenant is first made, you could put it there. And 12.7 backwards is July 21st. It's a symbol of midnight. Right? But here... And this is going to be him in Genesis 12. He's going to depart. So I guess it's not really, you know, this is him leaving Haran. Right? Okay. But the, the point that, that I'm looking at right now, here we have, we have Shechem, and it's, we're tying this to the covenant. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Shechem is also one of the cities of refuge. Yeah. Okay. Then how do we tie the cities of refuge in with this, with the covenant? Well, I mean, the city of refuge is representing the gospel. But this is a city of refuge within the territory of Manasseh, right? Yeah, in Manasseh, yeah. And how many cities of refuge were there? Um, I can't remember. And the cities of refuge were established if, if someone had been killed without forethought. Yeah, so manslaughter. Manslaughter. Yeah, so then you could go to the city of refuge and the, the situation would be judged. All right. So is this a judgment or is this a, a refuge of a message? How do we approach this? Well, I, I would think it's a refuge of a message. But here in the men of Shechem, so the men of Shechem, because they should be following the true covenant, right? I, right. Um, but they make this, this covenant that they shouldn't make, right, with, with Abimelech. So, and this is going to be quite a complicated uh, story, though, the downfall of Abimelech, right? So it's not because we've gone through it before. <laughs> it's, it, but what we're trying to say is who are the men of she Shechem? And they would be the men that are involved in this covenant, right? So it represents a covenant. But, but we have a true covenant and we have a false covenant. We have a counterfeit. So the, just the question, I guess I'm asking about the men of Shechem, if we're going to a attach a symbol to it, it would be this, the symbol of the covenant, but also we can attach to it the city of refuge. But what does the city of refuge have to deal with our message right now? Well, it is a refuge. Right. So. Yeah. Because they. The, the situation that we've got with this, with the, the men of Shechem, we have the message that is Abimelech being represented by the worthless bramble. Mm -hmm. The worthless bramble was grasping for honor mm -hmm. and was destroying that which was better than itself. Mm -hmm. Melo or Milo was the name of the Senate House or the Town Hall. And by the house of, of Milo was meant the chief men of Shechem, which, yeah. which had united making Abimelech their king. So these chief men, these leaders, are the ones that are promoting the message that we are tying with Abimelech. Mm-hmm. 
But these leaders are the ones that are going to come back to destroy Abimelech and also be destroyed by him. Right. So, so we're not necessarily taking them as people. No, we're taking them as messages. Right, as messages. Exactly. Or a message. Yeah, a type of message. So this is going to be a, me a message then, because the, there is the men of Shechem ally with this message. So there is a message that's supportive of this other message. So we need to kind of decide what that is. Um, but it's going to turn against um, the message of Abimelech. So how would we then have a message that was aligned with Abimelech turn against Abimelech? So would this be a message regarding the covenant? Would this go back to um, some other part of our message? Not July 18th, but something else? I'm having to consider if that wouldn't be correct. Yeah. So part of our message aligns with this other message. So the men of Shechem must refer to some message that was a covenantal message that was originally addressed with this movement. And, and I would say under the time that Jeff was the leader of this movement. Now, one thing that one thing that I've had to consider, we've been trying to tie quite a bit of our message with Rafia and Pania. Could that be the the point? that we're looking at as far as this message with Abimelech. Okay, you need to explain more what you mean by that. Well, a lot of Rafi and Paneum were brought out by Parminder and Tess, right? So the way that we would understand them. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah, and no. so we know that there was a lot of problems with what they were doing. And Jeff recognized that with Rafi. Right, prior to November 9th, 2019. Right. But in the in this situation with Rafi and Paneum, where is Rome? Well, because you're saying since Rome establishes the the vision and you're looking at Rafi and Paneum, but but they are they are a type of what's going to happen later on. Okay, but you know when I when I looked at the WhatsApp this morning, yeah, I was I was intrigued by Stephen's charts. Okay, so which one do you want to look at first? Well, he had he had one where his midpoint was one ninety one. Yeah. Okay. So. So we got that one. So that's the one you want to look at then. If if you can bring that up, yeah. Yeah, I will. Just, I just got to. Just can't bring it up on WhatsApp. I have to save the files and open them up. So. Sure. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, so this one file I have here. Okay, and then I'll just expand this a bit. Okay, so this is the 191. So we discussed this a little bit before. So what we have is the 434 years of the 62 right. weeks. If you divide it in half, it's 217. Now, 217 BC on June 22nd is Raphia. 
right? Okay. So, so this midpoint, which is 191 BC, is a division of this 62 weeks, right? Now, Stephen put 31 times 7 because 31 times 7 is 217. So, so he didn't put the 217 in there. Okay, but when I when I looked at this, what stands out, yeah, to me is the 191. Now, the reason it stands out, and what has not been looked at as as it may needed to have been looked at, and I, here again, I'm I stand ready to be corrected. Yeah, 191 BC was the year in which Rome defeated Greece at Thermopylae. Okay, so... Now, what many fail to recognize is there were several major battles at Thermopylae. Yeah, there's lots of them, yeah. Okay, when... That's the Battle of Thermopylae in 191 BC. Okay, when you, when, you, when you had the Medes and the Persians come against Greece in Thermopylae, this, this was the battle that the world recognizes as, as the 300, and they made yeah. a movie about it. Yeah, totally false movie, but nonetheless, still, they made a movie. Okay, now here you've got the Battle of Thermopylae occurring in... 191 BC. Yeah. And according to the Gregorian calendar, that took place on the 24th day of April. Gregorian or Julian? Julian, excuse me. Julian My calendar. apology. Yeah. So does this midpoint where Rome takes out Greece, they, they I mean, the, the Romans at that point went up against, I believe it was Antiochus Epiphanes, wasn't it? Um, I'll see if I've still got my, yeah. my information open. Hang on. Okay. Antiochus the third. Yeah, that's not Epiphanes. Is it? That's Antiochus. That's the Greek. Antiochus the Great, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't make sense, Antiochus Epiphanes. Okay. Okay, so anyway, we have this uh, 191, and this is Rome defeating Greece. Correct. Yeah, and, and the chart was sent to Iran at 3.17 a.m. Your time. Interesting. Right? For Iran's time, because it gives us our local times. What's 3.17? Uh, th three times, uh, 31 times 7. Oh, right. Right, so. Oh, you were referring to mountain time, my time? Very cool. Okay. Even better. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. So when, when I'm looking at this, I mean, this was, was occurring in... 563 at Urbe Condita, so 563 years after Rome is founded, they come up against Greece. Yeah. And they defeat Greece at, at this Battle of Thermopylae. So, I and I'm just, is this pass that they have to go through. Correct. So. I just found this, I, I found this to be very intriguing. Okay. Okay, well, that is interesting. Now, um, so when we, do, when we look at these, um, uh, so when, when we look at this, I mean, there's, there's lots here. Um, you know, I told Stephen it was kind of convoluted. That is, I mean, there's just too much there that I wouldn't have put in. Um, uh, because I think it's just this 191 BC. But see, 
he's tying it to the time of the end and to the two times of the end. Um, so basically taking this, uh, this division of the time of the end um, and seeing that it, they, they're, they're 191 years apart. But it, it's such a perfect chiasm. Yeah. And then you have the 65 and the 126 uh, to make it. Yeah. So, so this does tie this together. What, what I, you know, I mean, I know there's the 1260 there and he's putting that there because of 126 years. That's why he's putting it there. And, um, you know, he's giving us the whole 70 week prophecy. Um, now Rome conquers East Syria in the Pleasant Land, Judea in 63 BC and South Egypt in 31. So he puts these other uh, Rome. So Rome is part of all of this. So you have Rome establishing the vision. You have this battle of Thermopylae in 191 BC. And then 65 BC, he's placing there. And we know that um, that conquers East Syria and then that's going to be the siege of Jerusalem in 63 BC. And then he's going to cat. So these are the, these are the three um, geographical locations that Rome has to conquer. Right. Okay. Right. Syria, Judea, and Egypt. Daniel eight, verse nine. Um, so, so there's, so there's lots in here, right. In this whole diagram. But the main point here is this 191 years, right? So these three geographical areas to reign supremely connected with 191 and 65 dates or spans. Right. So, so there must be a simpler way to sort of do this diagram or do it as separate, separate diagrams to sort of bring it all together. Well, it, it's interesting as well because where the where the midpoint is yeah 126 years before the midpoint you have ptolemy marrying berenice the lady in waiting and there was quite a bit that actually took place within the macedonian empire in that year but 126 years before the midpoint takes you to 317 the time in which this chart was received according to mountain time. Right, which of course is the 331, 17 years here. So you add 126 plus 191. Right. Black there in the screen is because I brought up my uh, um, calculator just to make sure that's what I thought. So, um, so Stephen, you need to add the 126 years and the marriage of Ptolemy to Berenice if that's in 317. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, observation. Yeah, yeah. Can't see that here? Yeah. I mean, this, this this chart was just, I mean, when I saw it this morning, I just, I'm just going, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I saw it, I just thought, oh, there's too much on it. <laughs> but yeah so so we can add more to it um you know and, and and of course you need the week of christ to see the seven years and 31 a.d to get the th three one, 31 times seven right Yeah. Okay. So now we brought this up because of Rome establishing the vision. Correct. And, well, because yeah. you know, I you know, I understand the the points about the battles that we were addressing, but in no way when Parminder and Tess brought this up, were they focusing on Rome establishing the vision? Too much of that with them they were trying to occlude Rome's involvement because they were supportive of what Rome was doing. Right. And 
they were trying to deal with the this whole thing of the two the two channels of truth cnn and where the two the two rivers right. one being cnn and one being uh fox news correct and of course jeff had pointed out on september 7th that they had neglected to mention rome right this, this third one that was the whatever the network was called i can't remember it's too long, long for me ewtn yeah, EWTN. So, so we have a papal um, uh, media source that arises at that time as well. Um, so, Jeff, you know, and, and this was part of the whole thing is that, yeah, they're occluding Rome. They're removing Rome from the picture because they're in favor of Rome. Right. Rome isn't the enemy anymore. Right. The enemy is uh, conservatives, right? Which which sounds right to some people if you're a liberal. But the problem is that it's not really about conservatives because it's not really conservatives who bring in the Sunday law. It's, it's false conservatives in a sense. I mean, it depends what you mean by conservative as well because those, those meanings have sort of switched around. I mean... They, they don't really mean much anymore. It's like calling somebody a fascist. It's kind of a non-term. It, it's just an epithet with no no basis in it. But anyway, um, so so this is important, I think, in 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 understanding um, that probably then this the men of Shechem, this covenant is going to go back to the message of Daniel 11 verse 40 to 45 or just Daniel 11 in general. Would we agree with that? I think that'd be logical because that's the covenant that this message is based upon. Right. Right. This message is based upon Daniel 11 verse 40 to 45. And uh, so we need to return to that message correctly and understand what it's about. So would, would it be out of line to say that when Jotham fled to Beer, yeah. which was out of Abimelech's influence, yeah. that the message of Jotham was returning to the message of Daniel 11? Well, it is, but it's returning to... I mean, if we're going to say the well is representing the 2520, um, I still think that the problem that we have personally is that we don't fully understand Jeff's message. That is, we don't understand our message with the foundation. Like we studied the foundation, right? We spent time doing that. And, and then we're now understanding the lines. But as a movement, and I, and I think each of us can all say, we don't fully understand what our message is. I mean, we're struggling through this. We're looking at these things. We're trying to understand it. But the men of Shechem, if it's symbolizing a message, it's symbolizing a message that has gone off track, made a, made, made a covenant. In some way, it represents the movement itself. But the movement founded upon Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Well, as an additional point, does this have an application with Father Miller's dream? Okay, so you're talking about the dirt brush man. Yes. Well, I mean, yes. I mean, that's what's been happening with this movement because that's what this movement is about: is finding these these gems, getting rid of the counterfeits. So that we can finally set the message into the casket. But we we don't set the message into the casket. The dirt brush man does. Well, the dirt brush man does, yes. So we cooperate with him in that, in, it, in our study. I'm not disagreeing with your point. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Christ, Christ is doing this work as the dirt brush man. So, so we don't understand everything yet. And, right. and of course, it shines 10 times brighter. We know the message isn't just about 
uh, something that we put into some paper or put on a video. It has to do with our characters as well. Exactly. So, so I mean, our characters aren't refined and our understanding of the message is not refined. But the big problem we always make is we think we understand the message and we think that we're okay. Uh, and we make the mistake in that area. And that's why this idea of closing down study and discussion, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help the truth at all. It doesn't help us as individuals. You need to learn the meekness and lowliness of Christ. It, when somebody challenges us what we believe, we should welcome it because we need to be corrected. We know we need to be. And we should be able to trust that God can take care of his message. We shouldn't have this fear of our brethren, this suspicion. Yeah, and yeah, truth will prevail. Now, I just want to look at um, this other um, diagram. So this is the other one that Stephen sent. Um, so we had some discussion about it before the study started. So I'll bring this up. Okay, so uh, now the problem I had with this one was I didn't like referring to uh, Colin as an African-American because I don't think he would particularly like that. Um, because I know people from Jamaica who don't like that phrase. Um, if they're, if they're, they are from African descent, but they would refer to themselves as black. Um, they wouldn't like the term African American, but also I don't think it's a point that is really what's tying. I mean, with William Foy, he felt it was a hindrance for him as a black man to go and present the message. I mean, maybe as a mere, I mean, Colin does not consider being black as, uh, a hindrance in any way. Because as Grenadian, he, he believes that uh, um, he was taught, you know, you, it's a disadvantage maybe to some degree, but you just ignore it and you work hard anyway. So that characterizes the difference between African-Americans in the U.S. and Caribbeans uh, who live in the U.S., who are all very successful. Um, so they don't they don't consider this black as a handicap being black as a handicap, but but also I just don't think it's it's the correct um, point that should be marked here. And now in Stephen, in putting this together, what what is it you, you saw? You saw that there's the sixth and the seventh not yet sounding. So on December twenty fifth, the sixth trumpet happened, and Biden had not yet come. Right, dealing with Revelation seventeen ten. Yes, I'm just saying. Some, yes. Some similarities. Okay. That I and um, I'm not making any comment. I just sort of saying these are facts. Yeah. So how to it, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And and so so we can see the sixth king and Biden is. The seventh king. I don't know if I would put Biden there yet or the globalists, but because I don't see Biden as fulfilling that role. Yes, I'm just noting what Colin did. Okay. Whether that's right or not. I'm no, not Angel, Angel asked whether Janu Jul January 18th, uh, 2021 was the date that the FFA was sold. I don't know. Uh, not FFA, but the School of the Prophets was sold. And and then the people who bought it are still selling it. So they're just trying to make money on it. They're just trying to turn it over. Um, I don't know who bought it. But um, it's been up for sale ever since it was sold. Um, yeah, so... So if we look at this 525 days, I mean, it's just a fact, right? We know the 525 from July 18 to December 25th 
And we know from William Foy's vision is 525 days from August 11th, 1840. And we have the 118 there, uh, 118 for 11 August and 1 January 18th is also 118. So we have this symbol that ties these two together. But what can we make out of this as far as what we're talking about um, in, in the context of the other chart? I'm looking at these as being two very complementary charts. Yeah, okay. So what is this what is this chart telling you? Well, on the left side the the conjunction of the 11th of August of 1840 and 18th of July 2020 mm -hmm. replace I mean the 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 portion that that brings them together of course is that these were both dates tied to the prediction concerning Islam. Right. So those two dates that we'd already tied together um, in various ways, now we can see 525 days for the one is going to give us a significant uh, vision of William Foy, his first vision, where he says the sixth angel has not yet done sounding, which was something that the Millerites hadn't understood because they believed that August 11th, 1840, was the date that marked the end of the sounding of the sixth trumpet and that the seventh was soon to sound. Correct. And, uh, and, and the point here, of course, is that they had not recognized that you could have a beginning of the time of the end and then have to look that this would be a time period, not just a point. Okay. Yes. So when, when Foy comes on the scene and makes the pronouncement that the sixth angel hath not yet done sounding, he's making a notation without really understanding that this is still a time period, not a time point. Now, when, when Colin is tying William Foy with the situation with Co what, what Colin is saying, mm -hmm. should we not be looking at this again as a pronouncement regarding a time period rather than a time point okay well i'm not sure if i fully understand the time point time period here but um maybe it's just a lack of my understanding so i mean i just see that what i understand about the sixth trumpet is they just believe that the sixth trumpet ended when the second woe when the third woe the second woe ended, right? They they didn't see that the woe can end, but the trumpet still continue. That's my understanding of what William Foy is saying, because he's not he's not arguing that the second woe is still continuing, right? Right. He's just arguing that in vision. He's he's not arguing. He was shown in vision that the sixth angel had not yet done sounding. But that doesn't mean the second woe had continued. It had ended. It's just the trumpet has continued. Now, in July 18th, of course, we marked an event that to be fulfilled that didn't occur, and it's very parallel to August 11th, 1840, right? So they had a disappointment there. So did we. Now, some people try to, well, Larry Lesher tried to, to downplay that whole idea in saying that they didn't really expect to close a probation there, uh, but they did. They expected the close of probation there rather than, and, and they're going to take the elements that they understood and they're going to bring those over to October 22nd, 1844. So 
So everything that we talked about at close of probation, uh, they had already understood in August 11th, 1840, that that was going to happen. Now, so we expected things to happen on July 18th that didn't occur. But we can take that 525 days and we can line it up with this message of the 6th, but not the 7th, not yet. Right? Right. So, so that's the way that we're understanding. Labeling the 6th uh, king being Trump and the 7th being Biden, I don't know if that's necessarily um, putting Biden there is is correct. But um, we do have that date. And so Colin is going to present this message that is pa- based partly upon correct understanding of chronology and also has some insights that I believe that were given him regarding uh, the tying together of Revelation 17, um, Daniel chapter 11, the beginning part, and also Daniel chapter 2. And as a movement, we haven't been able to study into these things because we were shut out of that discussion. That discussion didn't want, they didn't want that discussion to happen, right? And then, of course, the studies that we did were then misrepresented to Jeff, and Jeff ended up uh, writing how, you know, basically it's the removing of the, the foundation is being attacked by what we were saying. But of course, we never said any of those things that we were accused of saying. So, so anyway, we, we have this on December 25th, 2021. Now, as I said, I wouldn't put the African-American thing there, but there is something else that ties them together other than the sixth and the seventh. And and that has to do with the connections with what is being predicted. Okay, right. please. So, so we have a close of probation being given on August 11th, 1840, but it's also the end of the second world. Now, July 18th is tied to the third world, right? Is it not? Now, when did the third woe begin? Nine eleven. Yeah, so it began at nine eleven, and and so we have to have an end to the third woe. Now, we don't we, we we haven't tried marking that particularly, other than we would sort of say, when when does the third woe end? Second coming of Christ or something like that. Yes, I think it would pretty much uh, connect with the seven last plagues. Right, yeah. So so we would tie it in there. Now, remember, in, in 1840, what were they expecting, expecting to happen when probation closed? They were expecting the seven last plagues, right? Correct. Right, so that so they, they expected that the seventh trumpet would sound. That would be the seven last plagues and so forth. Our time is running out. We're going to have to come back to this um so so we're gonna have to come back to this and look at what it's saying at the beginning to understanding what's happening at the end of this 525 days because i think it's much more involved than than this chart shows because we need to understand what what we were predicting on july 18th and what the millerites were predicting about august 11th 1840 and see how those are tied together. Because we were making a prediction concerning Islam. That's correct. But there's more tied to it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we'll come back to this tomorrow. You're going to be here tomorrow, Stephen, too? Yes, should be. Okay. Okay. Well, let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you again for this study. And um, we are thankful, Lord, that you are able to work upon our hearts, that you have have still continued uh, to plead with us, to correct us. And so we ask, Lord, that we can respond to your voice, and that we can obey your voice and walk in the path that you have set out for us. Help us to be faithful each day in the tasks you give us. Help us today especially as we go about our day. Be with each person. May your angels go before us. 
and be around us. May your Holy Spirit speak to the hearts of those we speak to. And may we be able to reflect your character and glorify your name upon this earth. We pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.